Ecclesiastes 5, 18 says, Behold, that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of his mm -hmm. labor. Yes. And he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, oh, right. which is God has given him for his portion. For every man to whom God hath given riches and wealth, and hath given him power to eat thereof, yes. and take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. Yes. You know, yes, God's, uh, God, that's God's blessings in life for us to enjoy the fruit of our labor. And God said he seen it, it was good, and he yeah. wants each and every one. And I told the crowd in the back, I said, y'all got 300. They, they ride me every time I come to church about <laughs> being retired. I told them, Jeremy, I said, they got 364 days a year. And this is our day today. It's called Labor's Day. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'll be very brief on this lesson this morning. Our Praise lesson comes from the book of Psalms. I know, John. It's a brand new quarterly. If you don't have one, there's extras right here. But today you find the psalmist reflecting and meditating upon the majesty and the, uh, the ultimate wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. And um, he is reflecting on the creation of, the, of God, uh, how God created the heavens and the earth. And this morning I wouldn't want to talk, I, I'm not here to talk to any, to talk to you about if you believe God created heaven or God created earth. That's not what I want to talk about this morning for just a few minutes. But I believe, unless I'm badly mistaken, I believe everybody under the sound of my voice right now believes that God created the earth. Sure. Believe, I think everybody believes that God created the heavens and the earth. Sure, come on, Ron. And uh, I'm not here to try to convince you of any way that God created because I believe you already believe that. What I want to talk to you about this morning is I want to encourage you and I want you to increase your faith about the one that you believe that created all this heaven and one that spoke everything into existence. As the psalmist talked about it, oh, yeah. just the will of God, just the Spirit of God moved upon the face. And how God spoke and told all the water to recede into one place. Oh, and right. Created the dry land and created the earth. Yes. And as the psalmist reflected, all these things. That same God that you believe that did all these mighty things. Oh, yeah. Is still the same God. Same today. God. That God that you believe that did all this in the beginning is the same God today that's still mindful of you and I. Yes. It's the same God that created, he said he created created the earth. When if you'll go back and read, he said he created the herbs and the trees. Yes. And all that. I want you to really pay a close attention to the language. He said he made it in his kind. Uh-huh. Yeah. Richard, his kind has no ending. That's no, right. Has no beginning. He created this seed and herbs and trees and grass. He created everything, he said, in his kind with a seed inside itself. So it renews and it re <laughs> regenerates itself Come on, Ron. over and over and over and yes. over. And this world he made to stand forever. Yes. And man cannot destroy this earth. Nope. God is the only one that will be able to destroy the earth. You're right. right. Amen. God said one day coming that he was going to cleanse this earth. Yes. With fire. Yes. And this cleansing of this earth will become a new earth and a new heaven. Yes. See, all these things that we look at, these trees, now all the creatures, innumerable, yeah. talks about all the creatures and the, and the lithiums, he talked about the whales and all the great creatures yes. in the ocean. God created it all. And God is mindful of all. And he set this earth in perfect balance, and in perfect motion, Yes. That it would renew itself and all these animals that he created 
would be fed. Come on. And that for you and I, that we would have substance and we would be able to sustain life. Because this creator of life is also the sustainer of life. Yes. This creator of life is the one who sustains you and our life and supplies our every need. Amen. Yes. <laughs> but what I want to reflect just a little bit this morning, I want to reflect to God's plan for you and I. If you'll go back and read God's plan for you and I, it's a lot different than we're living today, Jeremy. Yeah. Lord. <clears throat> Say God's plan for mankind when He created man in His own image, in His own likeness. His plan for mankind was to live in perfect peace, to live in perfect love, to live in perfect harmony with Him forever and ever and ever. You're right, Ron. Right. But right. see, sin comes to the world. And when the sin entered the world, it changed everything. If you'll go back and read, and I'm trying to hurry, I'm trying just to hit the highlights of what all the notes I have. If you'll go back and read chapter, start of chapter one, as God created the look and created the heavens and the earth, created all the animals, created the light, created the seas, created the land, and then he created man. Right. If you'll go back and look. God said he placed a garden in the eastward of Eden. Yep. And in this garden, if you'll go read, he put every perfect herb and everything that it took for man to live on. Right, Ron. And he said he took man, the one that he, therefore that he formed from the dust, and he set him in this garden. Come on, Ron. And he placed him in this garden of Eden that he placed. Yes. And if you'll read in this garden, there was trees that put off fruit. Yes. I want you to go back and read it this week. I want you to read that because God put the tree of life Come on. in that garden, Richard. Yes. yes. He put the tree of knowledge. He put the tree of life. He put everything good it said everything that God yet created was good and it yes, was perfect. Did. So he created this earth and he created everything perfect. Yes. Because that's what God is, perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he did not tell man that he could not eat from the tree of life. He told man not to eat of the tree of knowledge. Because when he eat the tree of knowledge, he, then man would realize evil yeah. and good. Yeah. You're right. If Adam would have obeyed God, he could have ate of that tree of life. And Adam would have lived forever. Yes, yes. You go back and read it because when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge, God put him out of the garden You're so right. he couldn't eat the tree of life. Come on. So when sin entered, everything changed, and that's when death. Enter the world. Oh, yes, you are. Come on, Ron. Sounding good. So God's plan was for you and I to live in perfect harmony, perfect peace, yes. perfect love, yes. in a place called, in a place, <coughs> paradise. Paradise. Yes. That was His plan for you and I. Yes. But mankind sinned, and sin came in, and all everything evil. When Lord. sin come in, ever that evil come to the earth. Yes. And you could go back and read, and he said, okay. Since this happened, now you're going to have to till this ground. Yes. And briars and thorns and yes. thistles and all of these things the mosquitoes, yes. coming Amen. into the world. Amen, yes. And you're going to labor your whole life. You're not going to live, you're not going to lay and rest in perfect rest and perfect peace. Come on, You're going to have to labor all the days of your life. Come on. That's why we've got Labor Day, Louis. Come on, man. I know this will be good. But the God that I want to talk to you about this morning is a God of full of mercy and full of grace. Yeah. He's full of long suffering. He's yeah. full of. Love, 
Yes. The passion. Yes. See, he is the God of second chances. Oh, yes. Amen. So God <coughs> gave each and every one of us a second chance. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, yes. into this world. Amen. His only begotten son to redeem us and to sanctify us and give us back what God had intended for us to have all along. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Through Jesus Christ, the acceptance of Jesus Christ and the blood of Christ applied to our life, Jeremy, once again, God, God has offered us a place where we can live with Him forever oh, yeah. and ever and ever in perfect peace yes. and perfect love yes. and total rest in a place called paradise, heaven. Yeah. Right. See, that was God's original intent for you and I. You're right, man. And we messed it up. Yes. Oh, yes. And now He's given us an opportunity to have it again. You go and read about this new place when this new heaven and this new earth and John said, he showed me a pure river. Crystal is coming out of the throne of the Lamb of God. Right, yes. Amen. Clear as glass. Clear as glass. Yes. And you go on and read, and guess what's there? Yes. What's there, Richard? Come on. Drown, buddy. What's there beside the river? The tree. Oh, the tree. The tree of what? The tree of life. life. Yes. That tree of life that Adam could have had. It ain't never yes. died. No, it was just put in a new place. Yes. And you and I can partake of that. That's funny. We'll go to this new heaven, oh, yeah. this new earth, where that tree of life is beside yes. this crystal liver. And it said it bears 12 manners of fruit. Yes, it does. And Old that tree that God intended for all of us. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And how God intended this world to be. Yes. You and I both can have it. Yes. Yeah. We stand here this morning, we are just like Adam and we're just like Eve. They had choices to make. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Whether to obey or whether not to obey. Yep. Yeah. Their choice was to obey God or not to obey God. Yeah. You're right, Ron. God told Adam and Eve you can have all everything I give you. Come on, Ronnie. Everything is perfect. Yes. Everything is set up for you. Yes. Everything is wonderful. Oh, yes. You will not want for nothing. You don't need for nothing. You don't have to labor for nothing. Come on, man. It's here for you. Yes. I built it. I planted it. I made it. Yes. And I set you in it. Yes. And you can live forever and ever and ever. Yes, yes, yes. That's our choice this morning. Yes. yes. There stands before you the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yes. And the tree of life. The tree of life is Jesus Christ. Amen. This tree of knowledge is nothing but knowledge of evil and worldly things. You're right. Now we all like to go back and we can... I'll look back and blame everything on Adam and Eve, but you're standing in a place this morning Come that on. you Amen. cannot blame nobody but yourself. Amen. 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 Yes, right. It's laid before you. It's given to all who wants to accept. Yes. And it's presented unto you, and God said, "Here it is." Yeah. You're right. Do you want it? Yes. Or not? Yes. If you don't, I'm giving it to you freely. Really, you're right. And all you got to do is accept it. Amen. Yes, right. Adam and Eve didn't have to, before sin. They didn't have to till that ground. They didn't have to prune nothing. They didn't have to do not one earthly thing. They was just placed in it. Yes. Set up in it. Yes. And everything was paradise. Amen. Right. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to do nothing this morning. 
It's God has prepared a place. Oh yeah. Not by man's hands, but by his own hands. Yes. And he's given it to you this morning. Amen. You're right, Sean. <laughs> Everybody wants to bring my God for all the bad things. In Come this on, world. that's right, Ronnie. God has not created anything bad. No, sir. Right. Everything He said Amen. was good. Right. And He went on and said, when He got done, He looked back and He said it was very good. Yes. <laughs> now you can blame my God on anything you want to say, but He, He said He never <coughs> made nothing that wasn't good. Amen. You're right. Sin has destroyed and is continuing to destroy people and this earth every day. You're right. But this God is long suffering and this God is merciful. Set this up in the beginning for all us to have, and we messed it up. He gives you another chance. You're right. And it's yours to take this morning. You're right. It ain't stopped and it's not going to stop until he's done. Yeah. Till he says it's finished. You're right. Folks is living today, if you could take someone that, that maybe was born in a coma and, and maybe lived several years, I was thinking about this as Ronnie was teaching. And uh, if they was to wake out of the coma, say they was an adult, 25, 30 years old, they would wake out of their coma and they would look around, being in the middle of the summer. All the gardens and all the fields would be full. And all the trees would be covered with leaves. All the grass would be green. Come on, Richard. How beautiful. How beautiful. This is. Yes. And at this time, and it seems as me that, that leaves has begun to turn quick. Yeah. yeah. This year. Um, it, it, I don't know but if that person that had just waken out of that coma since birth and they'd seen all the life and about this time of year things would start dying many people's already cleaning off their gardens the harvest has passed that person would be so sad and they'd think, my goodness gracious, a beautiful place where everything was full of life. In such a short period of time, in such two or three months, Ronnie, death has begun to take over this beautiful place. Them not having the knowledge yet, but all as soon as this time passes, as soon as the winter months is gone, if God would tarry his coming, Life will come back to this place that looks at death that's taken over. That's what I've been trying to preach for years. This is not the end. Jeremy, if we'll serve the Lord and trust the Lord, life like we've never known it before is coming for us. Been a wonderful service. Been a wonderful service. Yes, it has. This is one of my blessings. This is one of my many, uh, one of my greatest blessings is getting able to come to this church as yes. Betty always says. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Been here a little over 15 years, going on 16 years. Probably closer to 16. Be 16 if you keep me in February. Uh, I, one of the greatest blessings that I've received for the most part the Bible teaches us and for a church to be profitable and for a church to uh, do well is for the body of the church to respect its leaders. And I'm being serious now. If it was God's will and the church would vote for Bozo the Clown to pastor this church, it's the duty of the body of the church to respect Bozo the Clown's pastor. Amen. If you don't believe that, read the Word of God. Right, Donna? And uh, I thank God for the respect that I have here. 
I'm glad, uh, I, I really am, I'm glad for that. But I'm also glad I've seen pack, uh, pastors before, and that's their business, that didn't allow the church to laugh. But I'm glad we get to laugh once in a while. Oh, yes. I'm going to do that's something great. right real quick. Uh, Andy and, and Jared, uh, for the visitors, our visitor brothers up here, these two guys, uh, two of the three guys that tries to look like me, they shave their heads so they look like me. I appreciate that respect too. But the two younger ones, I'll put it that way, are West Virginia State Police. And uh, in part of their training, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, is to be able to uh, analyze an individual and look at an individual and try to figure out what kind of person they are, right? Before you make an arrest, so to speak. Hard to do sometimes. Kay, would you stand up, please? <laughs> would you turn around for just a minute? <laughs> All right, now you can be seated. <laughs> Jared, you haven't been coming here this long, and I'm going to see how, how much you paid attention in your uh, training as a West Virginia State Police. Uh, give me your perception or, or, or your opinion of that lady that just stood up. Honestly now. Honestly? Yeah? Looked like a nice lady? Yes, she's very, very nice lady. Very nice lady. Uh, don't look like she's mean or ornery or nothing. You know, we'll do my parents. Yeah. Uh, you've went to church here long enough to know that she she's not loud and disrespectful, right? Yeah. Well, this is a lesson to you, young man. Pay closer attention to people. She portrays herself as being a nice person, a nice lady, but she's one of the honoriest people in this church. When I first come here as pastor, going on 16 years ago, they had me a birthday party up in the building. And she, I thought was so sweet, I about teared up at first. Her husband told me that she had made me a personal birthday cake. It was small. And I was honored. I thought, man, I'm getting off on the right foot. The church is showing me respect and being nice to me as pastor. Wanted me to cut it in front of all the people. Furnished me with a big old knife. And I cut that, attempted to cut that cake. And I got through the icing and the knife was like stopped. And I thought, poor oh, kinky. <laughs> no wonder he's slim after all these years. This woman can't cook. I never did get that cake cut, so I peeled away the icing. And man, it was a good looking cake. I never will forget it had white icing. And I knew it was chocolate inside, but it wasn't. The inside was also white. It was a fresh roll of toilet paper. She had ice. <laughs> so she's ornery. Okay, I never forgot that. She got me a card, her and Kinky. And thank you for all the cards, birthday cards. But uh, I about teared up again. And she, it's got on the front, said, you've got that something extra that separates the men from the boys. I thought, how sweet. <laughs> and I opened it up, and it said, age. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you didn't do that. Kinky did. All right. So I'll get kinky. We love you, Kay. <laughs>